Hello and welcome to Nextstar's video series on the Salesforce Developer Workbooks. In this track, we'll be walking you through the Analytics Workbook. This video covers Tutorial 1, Getting Started with a Simple Dashboard and Report. Let's start by creating a dashboard. Go ahead and press the Dashboards tab. We'll click on New Dashboard. We'll select Dashboard Properties. For the name, we'll put in Sales Manager Dashboard. We can also press tab to autocomplete the dashboard unique name. We'll save it to my personal dashboards and press OK. Now let's go ahead and press close and then save and close. And then finally save to save our dashboard. Now before we can create dashboard components, we have to create reports that are used as the source for the components. So let's go ahead and create a report. Click on reports. And now we'll go to New Report. And because we're looking at Opportunities, we'll select the Opportunities object, Report Type. And then we'll press Create. This takes us to the Report Builder, which is a drag and drop visual editor for reports. Let's apply some filters so we can get the data we want. For Show, we'll select All Opportunities. For Opportunity Status, let's select Closed One Opportunities. And let's change the date range to April 2012 to the end of June 2012. The reason we're selecting these date ranges is because that's what the closed one opportunities are that have been pre-populated by Salesforce. Now instead of using the tabular format, let's use the summary format. This will allow us to create groupings. Let's drag the close month onto the grouping drop zone. And then let's select the amount column and click summarize this field. And we'll want to check sum and press apply. And now let's save our report. Let's give the name closed sales this quarter, even though technically that's two years ago, almost to the date. And then we'll press save. Now let's create our first dashboard component based upon the report we just created. We're going to create a gauge component. A gauge component tracks a single metric generally used to show the progress towards a goal. Let's go back to the Sales Manager dashboard. And we'll want to click Edit. We'll drag the gauge icon towards the dashboard. This is the gauge. And you can see here it says drag a data source here to add the data. So we'll go to the data sources. And we could either expand the reports or I like to just simply search. So I'm going to type in closed sales and it should find my report. And you can see it's under my personal custom reports. And I'm going to drag that report onto the gauge. And as soon as we drag the report on here, it'll start to populate the data. So congratulations, you've just created your first dashboard component. Now, some of these initial breakpoints don't make a lot of sense. So we need to set that. We can do that by clicking the wrench up here to edit the attributes. For the breakpoint one, we'll make this 2 million. For the breakpoint 2, we'll make it 4 million. And for the maximum, let's make it 6 million. And we'll press OK. And now you can see that your gauge should look like the workbook. And we're right in the middle area. We haven't reached our stretch goal yet, but it looks like we're getting there. Now let's add a header, title, and footer to the field on the component. For the header, we'll type close sales. For title, we'll enter sales versus quota. And we'll enter sales for the current fiscal quarter in the footer. Technically, it's not the current fiscal quarter, but this must have been created two years ago. So we'll click Save. Then we'll close. 
and then save and close. So we just created our first dashboard. Then we created a report and we used the report to create the gauge component on our dashboard. Now sometimes we may be interested in different data for our gauge report. For instance, maybe we want to look at the gauge report by territory or industry. We can do that with the dashboard filter. To add a filter, let's edit the sales manager dashboard. We'll go up here and click add a filter. For the field, we'll select industry. And now we can create a few different groupings. So for the first one, I'm going to just simply copy what the workbook had in there. You can see you can check them or write them in. I'll go ahead and check them this time. Apparel, hospitality, recreation, and retail. Insert selected. And finally, we're going to do something a little bit different on this one. Biotech, chemicals, construction, engineering, and environmental. This time we're going to name the group. We'll name it group three, just for demonstration purposes. We'll press OK. And notice now that we have a filter drop down at the top of the screen. You can see that both the ones that we typed in, the ones that we selected, and the third one, group three, which we named, and that isn't part of the workbook because that was part of the later release, all seem to work. So let's select the middle one, apparel, hospitality, recreation, and retail. And you can see it'll lay different information based upon those industries. Now, if we want to go ahead and remove the filter, we can simply click remove filter. And you saw that you can also edit the filter too. Thank you for joining us. In our next video, we'll cover tutorial two, creating combination charts and custom table components. Click to follow us on YouTube for more great content.